<clears throat> this is the monthly update. Uh, Happy New Year. This is January 1st, 2013. Yeah. Kind of a strange angle to start at, but I just want to show this is the, the base of the Roma tomato. It's only about uh, as, as thick as my pinky here. This is what's been going on since the last update. This, it's like right out of Little Shop of Horrors. This plant is gigantic. <clears throat> I am standing back away from the planter about six feet just to try and get it into frame. It's huge. I uh, watched, uh, you know, and looked up uh, how to help pollinate these buggers and just flicking the flowers or shaking the branches. I'm still, uh, you know, waiting to confirm that that works, but and it might be really hard to see it in here right now. There is um, a cluster of tomato that's coming in that has, oh, there they are, that has four of them on it. That's next to the large one right there. There's four more coming in on one cluster there, and that's just by flicking the flowers. <clears throat> um, it's probably about, it's over six feet across the whole plant. We've got uh, some snap pea, and that's a pinto bean that's going to be coming in. <clears throat> the basil, of course. These are the biggest basil leaves I've ever seen. I've... It is huge. <clears throat> and I found with this basil, after drying some of it and then crumbling it up and using it in a sauce, that it has that, that sweet, spicy smell with like overtones of like black licorice. It's awesome. It tastes so good dry. But there are flowers and there are tomatoes all over this thing. And I find <clears throat> with the tomato you can kind of tell the fingers stop growing. The green leafy part on the outside of the flower stops growing. And on ones where it, it is taking hold they get real big and robust real fast and then a couple days later there's a tomato coming out. It's dark in there right now, I can't see that. Sorry about that shot, but the first Roma tomato is definitely eating size, but it does take, they are taking forever to ripen. But all of the new tomatoes that are coming in are growing much faster than the first one did. You can see how far up over, I mean, I can stand underneath the tomato plant. There's more arms that I've got to pin up here. This one needs some support. And the kale is has definitely gotten to the size of the kale leaves that you know, get in the stores. And it's awesome. It tastes great. We've been eating it. and I just cut some off and more grows. And... There's tons of kale. Now, mind you, this is January 1st, and there's tomatoes and how big this plant is. Get a shot from back here. How deep it is. It's just a monster. <clears throat> now we've had a couple of things happen. Uh, we've actually had a lot of rain, so I had a flood um, happen with the rain. Um, the barrel started to overflow and go out the port that has the plumbing. So I needed to address some issues, and in the process I found out that the blue tilapia had they had more or less killed all of the Nile tilapia 
and there was one stuck in the plumbing and caused some flooding. So once I tore everything apart, it, I found a dead fish in there. <clears throat> but I had the idea, and I took some some plumbing parts out. I used to have a T with two of these on the bottom of the tank, and it was proving to be too much, so I would have to have the valve closed uh, quite a bit of the way. And so with that happening, I'm not getting as much positive drainage, and anything that gets stuck in there hits that partially closed valve and will flood the whole system. So to make sure none of that happens, I took uh, some of the plumbing out and reduced the amount, and now I have a wide open valve and perfect water level. Oops, you cap it. You can see how the water level will start to rise because the leveling siphon has been extended. But all it does is start to go into this one and a half inch stream now that comes out the side and will return right back to the sump. So it works even better now. So the storms were a, a good thing. They made me rethink the build and my plumbing and now I actually have this valve wide open all the time and the balance is perfect. And the water is just so clean. Uh, new air stones. I put in four inch blade style air stones and it creates a quite a bit of a dead zone right here so I feed them right there and the food just drops right through them. Almost nothing goes over. So you see how that's all flowing through there now. And it'll just drain right to here. There it goes. And the the line, the secondary drain is a one and a half inch, so if the other drain were to fail completely, this would still ha uh, be able to siphon more than enough water out, or drain more than enough water out to keep the water level from flooding the tank totally. But when this is working properly, you just take this off and uh, see how it's already sucking water and air down through there. And it'll level the water back off and right to the bottom of the look of the other drain, so it works perfect. So now in normal mode, that is skimming off, you know, any debris or any waste that floats to the top. And there's less uh, plumbing inside the tank. There's two heaters and one is strapped to this upright and the water temperature has been in the, the low 70s but very tolerable. Water chemistry looks pretty good. Um, with the rain I've had a pH spike so I'm going to actually need to lower the pH a little bit but no ammonia, no nitrite, which I need some more fish in here, you know, to to feed this giant tomato plant. So the nitrates are right around 10. But uh, all in all, just keeping it stable during the cold weather right now has been the big, you know, deal. And it's been working out great. The water is just beautiful. And you can see all the way down to the bottom of the tank, so. So everything's looking good. I've got the indoor project going, which I'll be doing a video of that. Uh, I'll give you a little glimpse. That's going to be the indoor breeder. I'm going to pull the larger fish out of here and uh, set that up inside the breed. That's a 55 gallon tank that I got. And I've got pictures I'm going to put into a video and everything to show what I did to it to make it a rimless tank uh, and cutting glass and different things like that. But other than that, this is this is where we're at. This is just gigantic monster. We're, it's 
January and we're just covered in flowers and there's got to be at least 20 tomatoes on here right now and, and all is good so I hope everybody had a great Christmas and New Year's and hello to everybody at work that might be watching hello to everybody else that has been watching and thanks for your interest and any comments any you know questions or anything feel free to to leave a, a comment, so Happy New Year, everybody.